Next on NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. We're heading to the kitchen for a look back at some of our favorite beef recipes. NCBA chefs cook up popular beef recipes the whole family will love. And now, NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. All of us who make our living in the cattle industry not only love the way we live, but we also love to enjoy the outstanding product we produce, beef. And as an industry, we're blessed to have the Culinary Center located within the NCBA offices here in Denver, Colorado, to create new and delicious ways for us to enjoy beef. So this time around, we're sharing some of our favorite beef recipes, the ones you and your family will want to prepare over and over again. Let's start cooking. If you're like me, football season's always a time to enjoy family, friends, and food. Kristen Ledgerwood from the Culinary Innovations team is with us, and let's talk tailgating with beef, Kristen. Of course. Well, I think a lot of people think of beef to take when they're tailgating, but I don't think a lot of people think of brisket as an option. Burgers normally. Right. Yeah. Burgers are, are, are a go-to, so sure. why not try something different and do a little brisket? Um, this recipe today, we're doing a braised brisket. Okay. We're going to make some street tacos. Okay. Um, but we're going to do everything um, besides building your tacos ahead of time. Perfect. So you can just take it with you. Enjoy the game. And enjoy and, the game. Yeah, enjoy the friends. That's fantastic. And yeah. so you've already got a brisket started here it looks like. I did so I've got a I went ahead added a little bit of olive oil into my stock pot okay. and I'm starting to brown the um, both sides of my brisket. Um, okay, for somebody who likes to barbecue brisket you're you're worrying me a little bit when you put the the brisket in a stock pot and start browning it. You're wondering it. about so it I'm, aren't you? I, I, I am I'm uh, you're gonna have to sell me on this concept. I love barbecue brisket. Well this is uh, a braised recipe, so we're going to add some liquid to it, okay. and we're going to get it, um, cook it until it's pork tender, Okay. Um, which it's just going to melt in your mouth. Very good. So it's another alternative to what you're traditionally use sure. your brisket for. Smoking a barbecue, yeah. Right. So, um, so like I said, we're just going to, we've just gotten this a little bit nice and brown. We're okay. going to brown both sides of those. Sure. And then we've got a little bit of that olive oil left in there. Okay. And we're going to start adding some of our aromatics to ah, the recipe. Give it a little extra flavor and so That's forth. That's right. What do we have in terms of aromatics? We have some onions. Okay, sure. So we've added, we've got sliced, sliced some onions in there. About how much? Just several? Just a, a, about a half a cup of onions. Okay, that's good. And some minced garlic. Perfect. So this is all going to mix in there and it's going to get nice and flavorful. You're going to start to smell it. A lot of times people wonder what you're cooking and right. it's, it's those onions and garlic that yeah. really start to make the smell. It smells, yeah, I, I love, I mean, I love those two anyway. Yeah. I don't know if we ever think of them with, with brisket, but uh, so, so you just, you're, you're just going to kind of cook those for about how long then? Um, just till they're um, sauteed enough to a little translucent. We're really just going to, about four or five minutes or okay. so, right. um, just to bring out that um, that lovely smell that you usually get with it. Yeah, absolutely. And then we're going to go ahead and add our brisket back in oh. on top of our onions. Okay. Okay. Very good. So we'll do that. And then you've got uh, some other things here, and I'm not sure what you've brought us here. Well, everybody, when they go tailgating, usually has some beer around, okay, right? Okay, sure. So you take one of those bottles of beer that you're going to... Uh, that you were going to drink. you were going to drink, <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and add it to our brisket. Okay. So we've just got one bottle of beer. Just as kind of a tenderizer, or what, what, what else this is it going to help yeah. break it down, but it's also um, going to be flavor. some flavor, yeah. a lot of flavor. Tomatillo salsa. Okay. So you can just find this in the grocery store, just a jar, um, and you're going to add some of that salsa in there. Very good. Now you can tell it's kind of quieted down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. So we're just going to um, stir that in there. Okay. And how long are, are you going to cook um, all these things then? This is going to go for about two and a half to three hours. Oh, wow. But our key is looking for fork tenderness. Okay. So you're going to stick a fork um, in there, and you're looking for the brisket to actually um, 
pull away from the fork. Very good. And that's when you know it's at that nice tenderness And stage, speaking so. of fork tender, uh, did, you, did you bring a sample for us? I did. <laughs> I, I thought did. I saw that. <laughs> so we went ahead and cooked up a uh, brisket beforehand oh, for wow. y'all. And so what you do after it gets to that fork tenderness stage, we're going to take the brisket out and we're mm -hmm. going to go ahead and slice it. Oh, yeah. The sauce we're going to reduce down. We're going to make it a little bit thicker and okay. we're going to add the brisket back into it. One more time. So and what does that do? It's going to add a little bit extra moisture Flavoring. and then you're also your flavor is going to hold wow. into your brisket. So. And then you're going to take that uh, in a crock pot or something to just keep it warm. Is yep. that right? Whatever you usually travel to that, that you can keep warm at, at uh, while you're tailgating, yeah. just go ahead and put it in there and then while you're um, we making your tacos. Yeah, tell us about the uh, the tacos themselves. Sure. Yeah. So you pick your favorite corn tortilla, flour okay. tortilla, whatever you know you um, you like at the store. Pick that up. We're gonna add the brisket back in there, and then some of our great um, toppings, some salsa, cilantro, green onions, whatever you feel like. Looks delicious, and so. it's it's especially easier. Just cuts down the stress and the hassle uh, at the tailgating party itself. Kristen, sure. you've taken tailgating to altogether different level this fall with beef. <laughs> Thanks for bringing us this Trying recipe. To make it easier. So thanks for having me, Kevin. You bet. For this and other outstanding recipes, visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com or you can go to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Still to come on this special in the kitchen edition of Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll share more delicious beef recipes that are sure to put smiles on the faces of your family members. Stay with us. We're just getting started. You're watching NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman on RFD-TV. Saddle up and make your way to Denver, Colorado for the 2017 Cattle Industry Summer Business Meeting. This is your chance to stay up to date on beef industry trends and policies, meet with industry leadership and your fellow cattlemen and women. Plus, you'll get insights on hot topics at the Issues Forums. Mark your calendar for the 2017 Cattle Industry Summer Business Meeting, July 12th to the 15th in Denver. Find out more at beefusa.org. Long live the courageous, the tenacious, the ones who push forward and give back. Long live the greater good, the helping hand, and long live the truck built to outlast them all. Ram, America's longest lasting pickups. Stay Tough Fence will last three times longer and is four times stronger than low tensile fencing. High tensile wire, solid vertical stays, and tight fixed knots all provide superior strength. You will use fewer posts, saving time, labor, and money. Protect your investment for generations with Stay Tough Fence. Stay strong. Stay tight. Stay tough. We're back in the kitchen with Shanoa French from the Culinary Innovations team. And Shanoa, holidays are approaching, and you're bringing us a recipe, I understand, that uses beef in a wonderful new appetizer. It is. It's it's actually our play on um, cranberries and, and holiday stuffing. Sure. So in, in an appetizer format, you can serve at any type of party you want. Um, the great thing about this is we're going to actually talk about something that's kind of on trend right now is, is the custom grinds. Oh. So that's where we're going to start. A lot of people have their favorite cut of meat, okay. and um, they want to be able to use it in different ways. It's not mm. something that you have a ribeye steak that you can only put on the grill. So what we're going to do is we've created a custom blend, um, wow. a meat blend, and we're going to make just traditional meatballs after we've done that. Very good. So our blend is, um, it's a little bit of brisket, okay. a little bit of ground beef, yes. and a little bit of ribeye. Wow. So a little bit of that extra fat flavor for you. And All I'm going to go together. ahead, yeah, mix together. I'm going to throw gloves on okay. just so we can work through this, but at home you don't need to. Yeah, I um, have to admit I've not done any of my own custom grinds, but interesting concept. Yeah, and so if you walk into the grocery store or into your meat counter and you can tell them, you can ask for them to grind this for you. Sure. Um, this recipe is kind of a small amount, so they might not want to do that for you. 
you, okay. but you can do it at home in a food processor or, or a good. Cuisinart. Most people have these at home. So sure. we're going to dump this meat in here. The most important thing with this is that to make sure that your pieces mm -hmm. are all about the same size to start with. Okay. Um, I know sometimes when you go into the grocery store, you can get a coarse grind or a chili grind sure. or a fine grind. Yes. And making sure that your pieces are all about the same time or size, size. to start with will kind of help make that process okay. happen. Yeah. So the last little guys are our ribeyes. And about how much total are you uh, This using? is a pound. A pound total. So, yeah, and we're going to end up making 24 little meatballs. Mm. And so they are the appetizer three or four sure. to a piece. So, like I said, just stick them in there. The Perfect. trick to this is going to be your pulse button. Okay. So um, make sure everything's locked in. Mm -hmm. You're just going to pulse it. Oh, wow. And it's going to slowly... <laughs> you got to wrestle it to yeah. the ground, don't you? Stick them on the counter, and you're going to pulse them until it goes to the grind that you want. And you wow. notice it kind of has to grab them a different size. Yes. But once you've got them all, all ground in there, wow. you're just going to take your lid off. And you can kind of move them around if they're sure. setting on the blade where they need to, and you can oh, see that they're kind of mixing. I'm going to do it one quick more little time. Okay. Make sure we really get this going in That's here. That's amazing. I've, I've never done that. Whoa. Ooh. We got locked up Not here. Not sure what I did here. That's all right. Um, Hit a piece we'll of bone down. or something no, on. No. There's no bone in there. Yeah. So you always um, fillet the ribeyes before you put exactly. them in the Cuisinart. That's always good. So um, <laughs> we're gonna show you how you mix the rest of these meatballs together sure. from that. But if you continue to um, use the pulse button, it. yep. it'll grow, and you can see there's tiny little pieces in here. Right. Um, and that'll give you a different bite in the size of your meatball. Really? Yeah. So the more that you process it all the way down and it gets smoother in there, the bite will be much softer. And you leave them a little bit bigger, you'll have a more um, a chew to your meatball. Oh, interesting. So that's the one thing to think about. Yeah. So what we're going to do, and the nice thing about having a big bowl here is then we can just mix directly in, in okay. this bowl. Sure. So standard meatball recipe, which is really simple. Um, a little bit of garlic. So okay. you're going to start with crushed garlic. If you don't want to use fresh, you can go ahead and use powder or granulated. Okay. That'll go in there. Yes. Um, a little bit of pepper. Pepper, absolutely. Let's tack that in there. Good. This calls for one egg. I went ahead and, and beat it before we put it in here, but you sure. can add it. Um, again, we've talked about before is that you don't want to overmix sometimes. Okay. So if that's why I usually mix it up ahead of time. Sure. And then it's a little bit of water. Oh. You can't see that in there, but there's, there's three right. tablespoons of water in there. Okay. And then what makes this some of our mini Mary yes. is, is that you're going to take your standard um, stuffing mix. Oh, really? So a prepackaged stuffing mix. A lot of people use these around the holidays. Sure. Uh, mix a couple different things into them. And that is going to be kind of your binder or oh, your breadcrumbs that you would normally add sure. into meatball it brings mix. Brings a se separate flavor yeah. itself, too. And yeah. it really brings that smell of the sage and without yeah. having to add another oh, bunch of ingredients. So then you would just basically take mm -hmm. this, mix it in with your hands. Yes. And the thing is, is you're going to make 24. Most of the time when you're making meatballs, you make them a little bit bigger. Yes. But I like to say that these should be about the size of a large gumball. Wow. Little kids. So you want you need 24 out of a pound, which sure. is bigger than normal. So you get all these and you put them on a baking sheet like normal, bake them in the oven for 16 to 20 minutes so they're nice and golden brown, 160 degrees internally. And then you're going to serve them over here. Wow. And, and as we talked about the holiday bringing that theme in, the sauce that's in the middle there is a, it's a homemade cranberry barbecue sauce. I wondered what was making it so red. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's whole fresh cranberries. Okay. And you're adding a normal barbecue sauce ingredients. It's ketchup, molasses, yep. brown so sugar, a little bit of water some onions and you're going to put it on the stove in a stock pot mm. and let it cook and simmer down for about 20 minutes and then the trick to to get that real nice sh shine to it and mm -hmm. real smooth texture is you're going to run it through a blender oh so and the trick is is that you want to use why it's still warm mm -hmm. so it'll process through a little bit easier wow. um, but you'll run it through a blender and then you can serve the meatballs and, and cranberry barbecue sauce together what a unique way to utilize beef in an appetizer with a lot of the ingredients you're already going to have at, uh, at at holiday time yeah Thank you so much for bringing this idea to us. For this and other outstanding recipes, visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com or you can go to our website at cattlemantycattlemen.org. We're back with more right after this. No matter what job I've got to do, my John Deere 5E tractor can do it all. Whether I'm cutting, moving feed, or building a fence. Using my 5E means my work gets done faster at a price I can afford, and that works for me. This isn't a nine to five job. So when you check the pants one last time and get things ready for the night crew, 
It's not the clock that tells you the day is over. It's the confidence of knowing you got it right. So when you see the signs of BRD, choose confidence. Choose Suprevo from Burton Animal Health. Talk to your veterinarian about Suprevo for BRD treatment. Blaze a trail to Phoenix, Arizona and the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention with education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the huge NCBA Trade Show, outstanding entertainment, and more. Don't miss the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Phoenix, January 31st through February 2nd. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. If you like pot stickers, then you know that Asian influences have had a big effect on food in America over the last couple of decades. And we have a great Asian influence recipe we're going to cook up for you today. As Kristen Ledgerwood from the Beef Culinary Team joins us. Now, I understand, Kristen, as you were mentioning before, this is actually using a beef sausage that you all developed there at the Beef Culinary Center. Is that right? That's right. We've actually come up with um, about five or six different... Um, beef sausage recipes wow. and so this is one of our newer ones mm -hmm. and it's utilizing um, some different um, Asian ingredients to be able to make an Asian style sausage. Wow. Now with the other ones we've got such flexibility you can just a change of some ingredients and you could have a Spanish style, mm -hmm. an Italian, a breakfast sausage, even a German sausage. So very versatile and um, a lot of fun. So this make. is just using ground beef mm -hmm. and then this mix of spices. That's right. And so each each um, recipe has its specific it's spices, spice. but they're all that we would find in your pantry. Super so. easy. Well, I hear yeah. something sizzling over there. Tell us about uh, uh, this recipe here. Very interesting. Well, this is our Asian style pot st um, beef pot stickers. Uh -huh. So this is a really great recipe for you to to make when you're gonna have a party. Sure. Um, have some guests over. Maybe you want to have a really nice dinner and okay. add this to it, um, or even bring in the family or the kids into oh, yeah. have some fun. Little so finger food. Yeah. It is. Yeah. They have a lot of fun making making it. It's very easy to do. So. Very cool. Um, all we've done, really, like I said, we go back to that beef sausage recipe okay. as we've added in some soy sauce a little bit of honey, mm -hmm. um, some mirin, and a couple different spices wow. into our ground beef yep. to make our Asian, Asian sausage. Okay. And then from there, I simply just added some shredded cabbage. Oh, okay. And to make things really quick and easy for me, I just picked up some from the grocery store sure. that's already shredded. Gotcha. So we've mixed that all up together. Yep. And then I um, went and picked up some wonton wrappers. And, and I have to ask you, where do you find these? These can actually, um, most are going to be located in the produce section of okay. your local grocery store. Very interesting. Um, close to, usually by the herbs, the okay. fresh herbs is usually Very where good. they are. So so we've they're just nice square yep. um, little pieces here. Wow. And very versatile. Very so we're thin, just aren't very they? thin mm -hmm. and they dry out very fast. Okay. So as you can notice, I have some paper towel here gotcha. that's a little damp. Yeah. That's to help keep the moisture in there and mm -hmm. from them getting crispy around the edge before sure. we cook them. So um, I'm going to also use um, my teaspoon today because okay. I don't want to overstuff my pot stickers, otherwise, gotcha. they'll start to. Um, overflow burst. and burst. I can imagine make a mess out of the pan. That's right. So this is as simple as it is. Take um, a teaspoon of your filling. Yeah. So a combination of the sausage as well as the uh, the cabbage. You That's just right. kind of put a little bit You're of both put in, in there. there. Yeah. And then I am going to take my finger and I'm just going to oh. wet the edges. I see. With a little bit of water that I have setting here. All right. And then this is the hard part. Okay. You're going to fold it over. Oh, wow. Okay. Fold it over and fold it over. stick it together? And sti Yep, stick it together. The big Simple. thing is you want to try to get all that air out. So I just oh, kind of move around I what see. I have. Push it out to the sides, yep. huh? And out like that. I'll be doing And seal it. And just like that, as you can Simple. see, we started. Yeah. That's your pot sticker. And then what do you do to cook them then? So to cook them, I have a hot skillet with a little bit of Pam spray in there. That's going to help keep them... Um, from sticking the nonstick, but then also oh, yeah. crisp them up a bit. Okay. And we're going to start off just heating them up, and once um, they've cooked about three minutes or so, mm -hmm. we're going to actually add a little bit of water oh. and let it. Very good. And the whole purpose of this, and you want to do this a little careful, get that going. Okay. And you're going to lid this. It's going to start to actually steam 
the pot stickers. Oh, and so you want them to see, oh wow, yeah. look at that. Interesting. Yeah. And then this so, is our final and, this is and our finished final product. Finished product. And I, I assume you have what, some soy sauce and sweet and sour sauce, or what do you have there? Yeah, we've got a soy sauce and then that is a sweet chili sauce. Sweet chili. So if you like it, just a little, Spicy. have a little key oh, yeah. spice, spice to it. Um, you can uh, you can choose your own um, condiment with it. What, so. what a great idea for appetizers, or like you say, uh, just to, to make a meal a little bit more special, have fun with the kids. Uh, we've never fixed these in our household. They'd be a lot of fun. They Thanks for coming. Them. Thank you for having me. To make your own beef sausage pot stickers and to find other great recipes, visit the website beefitswhatsfordinner.com or you can always see recipe video replays on our website, that's cattlemantocattlemen.org. It's a fast-paced world for everyone these days, especially for families, and making meals fast is sometimes a requirement. Christopher Geigel is with us today from the Beef Culinary Center, and he's going to tell us a little bit about a quick stir-fry recipe that works perfectly for busy families like ours. Is that right, Chris? That's right. We have a um, sweet and sour beef stir-fry that was wow. a State Beef Council-inspired recipe. Outstanding. So it's a pretty simple recipe, really straightforward. The first thing we're going to do is uh, make a little sauce. Yep. So I have some sweet chili sauce here. Okay. Going to add that to this bowl. Yeah. A couple of tablespoons or so, huh? About a quarter cup. Quarter cup. Yep. Add a little soy sauce to that. Yeah. Perfect. And a little bit of rice wine vinegar. Oh, wow. That does it. And that does it. We're just going to stir that up a little bit. Okay. We're going to let that sit there for a minute. Right. We have our vegetables here. We have some thinly sliced red bell pepper. Okay. And then also some snow peas that I sliced uh, thinly oh, as well. I was wondering what those were. Yeah, so I sliced them nice and thin because they cook really quickly that okay. way. You can leave them whole. They're just going to take a little bit sure. longer. I love snow peas. So I'm going to add those to this bowl here. Yeah. That and then the snow peas. You bet. And we're going to add a little bit of our sauce to that. Oh, okay. And even let, before you cook it. Even before it. we cook it. We're going to let them marinate a little bit. Oh, okay. Just like a tablespoon or two. Yeah. I'm going to take the same fork here and just, yeah, just mix those up and Very let them good. sit there. While those are marinating, um, we have the top sirloin, which is the beef we'll be using in this recipe. Gotcha. It's a, it's a lean cut, so um, really good for those who are looking to watch their... Weight, and you bet, yeah. Watch their weight. Sure. So we want the nice thin strips and small pieces for this, so we're yeah. going to take our knife and cut this lengthwise. Okay, sure. Like this, kind of leave them together there. All right. And then get some nice thin strips here. I see. So they'll quick cur so cook quickly, I suppose, and... Yep, so they'll cook really quickly. So yeah. just a few really thin strips they, right gotcha. there. Gotcha. I did some of this earlier, so I'm gonna add this beef oh, to yeah. that. Okay, that's perfect. So before we add it to the frying pan, we're gonna take this beef and add it to this bowl. Okay. And, and in total, you know, if you're cooking for a family of five, about how much beef would I want, you suppose? A pound to a pound and a half. Yep. Um, to the beef, we're gonna add some cornstarch. Okay. And some ginger. Oh, is that what that is? All yep. Right. Um, so either finely minced ginger, or yep. if you want to save some time in the fresh herb section in a grocery store, you can find some ginger paste already done for you. Perfect. And add that to that. Gotcha. And then is this just going to make our browning or breading, or what is this? So doing this does, here? does a few things. One of them is for flavor. Okay. Um, ginger and onions and garlic are all kind of in this aromatic family, oh, yeah. so okay. it adds a lot of flavor. The cornstarch um, adds to the browning and okay. the flavor development, and also helps to keep the beef nice and tender. Oh, excellent. So we're just going to mix that up and get it all coated real nice. Interesting. And then we have a frying pan over here, which sure. I started heating already, so it'd be nice and hot for us. Sure. I'm just going to add a little bit of vegetable oil to that. All right. Just a tablespoon or so. Right. Because this, again, is very lean. Cut. Very lean, so just enough yeah. so it doesn't stick and sure. to add some browning. So we're going to take part of this meat and add it to our frying pan here. Okay. It's really important when you're doing stir-fry to do small batches. Oh, really? You can see here that I'm not covering the entire bottom of the frying pan, okay. but I really want to spread out the meat here. That helps to brown it. If you add too much of it at one time, um, you wind up steaming the beef and you wind uh, up with this gray beef and not the nice brown color and flavor that oh, develops. I see. Okay. So you're going to just do this in like several batches? Several then, batches. So you'd, you'd brown this and then once it's brown on kind of both sides there, you yeah. can see it doesn't take but a minute to get nice oh, and yeah. brown. Exactly. Um, you would then take that out and add your next batch to it onto... Uh, I see. And then once it's all brown, you can kind of add it all back to the pan. I see. So this is pretty much there. That's outstanding. And then you're going to, do you add the rest of your sauce too, or? Yep, so at this point, with the rest of the beef, you would add your sauce. Yep. Very good. 
And your vegetables for that? Look at that. That's smelling and sounding great. And then you can just serve that over ramen noodles, or you if did. you're doing the gluten-free thing or don't like noodles, you can always serve it over rice. They have those already cooked basmati and different rices in the stores. Outstanding, and this is our finished product. Looks absolutely delicious, and that's smelling great, by the way. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for bringing this recipe. Thanks for having us. You bet. For this and other great beef recipes, visit the website beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Or you can check them out and see video replays on our website. That's cattleman to cattleman .org. Still to come, we'll visit with Baxter Black. And we'll be back with more of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman right after this break. Do you know all you need to about working cattle? Did you know there are proven methods that can reduce stress for the animals, for you, and for your crew? Learn from the experts who can help sharpen your stockmanship and stewardship skills. By attending a stockmanship and stewardship event, you'll learn proven ways to work cattle more efficiently, skills that can help put more money in your pocket. Find out more and locate a training session near you at the website stockmanshipandstewardship.org. Well, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the uh, Perina products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. Welcome back. And joining us now is Shanoa French from the Beef Innovations Group to tell us more about convenient, fresh beef products. Shanoa, Steve Wald was just on the show talking about a, a new product for today's time-starved consumers. Tell us more about convenient, fresh beef products. Well, like Steve mentioned, we have about 15 products that are available. Some of these are three-in-one, so they, they can make more than one sandwich for them. But we brought the, the three-in-one kits here to show you. We're going to work through one of the recipes today, but just show you how great some of the other options are. Sure. So this first one is a sandwich kit. And what the great thing about this is you can do sandwich for lunch, you can do sandwich for dinner. And if you turn these packages over, it tells you as you pick them up out of the fresh meat case exactly what you would need to make each type of sandwich. Mm -hmm. So some of the consumers say, well, I buy these knowing that I have barbecue sauce at home, or I always have onions at home or I know that I don't have sour cream so when I pick this up I'll need to pick that up along with it so like I said this is a sandwich kit which is a great option yeah um, this is the fajita kit which a lot of consumers do fajitas at home a lot of people are comfortable with that mm -hmm. there's a uh, frozen ones in the freezer right now but this gives them a fresh option if they want to add some other lime juices and still make the seasoning how they how they like it add mushrooms peppers onions bell peppers no bell peppers um, corn tortillas, flour tortillas, and then kind of garnish any way they want. Yeah, so, fresh, fresh beef is always a better option, absolutely. it seems like to me. Yeah, That's well, great. and it's, it's quick, too, yeah. which is great. Um, the last one that I'm going to talk about, and this is the one I'm actually going to show you in demo, is more of the hearty one. Mm. So this one either does beef stroganoff, um, a beef and pepper, or a mm. stew. So wow. kind of depending on, on what you want to do. Um, I went ahead, pulled the ingredients that we're going to need. Uh -huh. So I've got those here, and we're going to start using this kit. We'll show you how quick they and are. And we're going to do stroganoff today. We are. So Let's get started. I'm going to pull the sleeve off, okay. which is real easy, and I'm going to turn it over because that's where your instructions are. Outstanding. So we'll start that. I'm going to turn this up so we have a little bit of heat going. Okay. This is really pretty quick. Um, peel the over wrap mm -hmm. that you would have at the store, mm -hmm. just like you would at home. And this seasoning packet is right inside on top. How convenient is that? So I'm going to do this, slice it open. Okay. Be careful with the knife there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little one already, okay. right? So um, this is going to be my mixing bowl. All right. Pretty quick. Um, this is called the brown gravy package that'll come with your with your meat. Very it's good. a pound and a quarter. All right. About that. So it'll serve, and you can spread it out by adding different vegetables, and it'll kind of serve four or five or six, depending on how big your consumers That's are, how big your family is. Super flexible. Um, cup and a half of water. Everybody has Everybody that. Everybody has water. So. That's great. And then the only other tricky thing is going to be sour cream. Oh wow. Quarter a cup of sour cream. Wow. You want to use plain yogurt, whatever you like to use at home. This all just gets mixed in here. It's outstanding. I know we've always talked about trying to limit the number of ingredients just to make beef more convenient yeah, for consumers. Yeah, this one is. That's really convenient. Is very simple. I'm going to use a whisk, and okay. you want to get rid of um, the lump that's okay. in there, sure. and kind of incorporate your sour cream. Wow. So we're going to mix that up. 
Um, this will cook, and this is also actually what's the thickening agent to, okay. to kind of make that stroganoff. So it's the easiest gravy I've ever seen. <laughs> there you go, right? Uh -huh. So I'm going to push this to the side, and we're actually going to start with our meat. Okay. Um, pan is you know medium high heat. You don't sure. want it too hot. And as we start adding things into this pan, mm -hmm. they'll cook long enough to make sure your meat comes to temperature. So gotcha. this first step is just a searing. You're going to brown it just about a minute. Okay. We don't want to cook too long because then your meat's going to be overdone at the end process. And what kind of so oil are you putting just in Just a touch of olive oil. Olive oil. Perfect. Kind of to make sure things that don't stick in there. Good. I'm going to spin this around a little bit. That's great. We've got some heat going on our pan. I'm going to use some tongs. Um, as I put the meat in here, mm -hmm. you're going to want to make sure that it's kind of separated so okay. that we don't have clumps. Sure. So that's why I'm going to use these tongs. You can use your hands at home. Sure. Um, you'll hear that sizzle. You want Love that. It. We're looking to, to brown. Yeah. As we've talked about before, some of the Maillard reaction that happens, yeah. that browning adds flavor. So I'm going to kind of dump all these in here. And this only calls the instructions, as you'll see, say just brown it for about a minute. Okay, real quickly. Yeah. So we just want to get get that sear on that. You bet. So as we work through that. Now you used a separate set of tongs. Yeah. Just for food safety. For food safety. That's yep. great. Like I said, if I was at home, I would use my fingers sure. for that part. But here, so you can see we've got some brown on those pieces. Okay. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to flip them all over. Right. Keep them kind of separated. Yeah. And I'm going to add our mushrooms. Right. So this is eight ounces of sliced mushrooms. Okay. The recipe also or calls for canned mushrooms. Ah. If you like canned mushrooms better, make sure you drain them. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna toss these in here. All right. And we're just letting them all kind of wow. cook together. Perfect. You're looking for some of that sear, the heat on them. Yeah. Um, don't put a lid on here. Mushrooms have some water in them. Okay. Otherwise, you'll end up with a steamy mess. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, trying to keep, keep this working. Yep. Yeah, throwing <laughs> mushrooms. A rogue I'm mushroom. Jumping. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want to stir fry this long enough that your beet, as you can see in this one, has some of that caramelization, yes. that doneness to it. Right. But you don't have to cook this for like five minutes to make sure everything is done. Because what we're going to do is we're going to add this liquid here. Yes. And whisk that in. And, and then it'll continue cooking. It'll then. continue to oh, cook. Oh, perfect. This will thicken, and that gives you what some of your gravy is. Gotcha. So I have the heat turned down a little bit. So we're getting a little tiny steaming. You can see that in yep. the pan, but that's why sure it's important can. to keep that medium heat up on yep. your stove. It's okay so to have some liquid in there, though, right it's now. It's okay yeah. a little bit, yeah. If I had had my heat up a little bit, well, you wouldn't see that. Gotcha. So that's one of those things that we'll kind of keep Very remembering. Good. But some of these pieces are still raw, so I'm going to give them just a couple more minutes. Couple but more. what we'll do then is I'm going to take and whisk all of this in. Okay. Kind of make sure there's no lumps in there. Wow. And then this will become super, super simple. That's amazing. Yeah. So we're going to pour this over the top, kind of mix it in there. Gotcha. We've got a little lump on the side, so yeah. we'll, we'll add that and wait for our, and our pan to recover. And then how long are we going to want to cook this? Or this simmer? says that it simmers for about three minutes. Wow. So obviously we just poured cold water sure. and some sour cream in there. Your pan's going to re return. Mm -hmm. You'll start seeing a little bit. It's starting to boil. So you'll let this, you know, bubble for about three to five minutes, okay. make sure that it's, it'll thicken, sure. um, and then you can go ahead and serve it over the top of your That's favorite. Outstanding. Yeah, we used um, whole wheat noodles here. You can use rice. You can use spaghetti noodles. Whatever your family prefers to eat stroganoff over. What a quick and convenient but delicious way to enjoy beef. Thanks so much for bringing us this recipe and this new product innovation. Yeah, I'm hoping to have it in all the stores here soon. That's exciting. For more information on convenient fresh beef, visit the Beef Innovations Group website at beefinnovationsgroup.com. Or you can visit our website at cattleman2cattleman.org. Don't go away. We'll have more of this special edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman right after this. What does it mean to be an American cattleman? It means you have what it takes where it counts. On the inside. At Ritchie, we understand that. It's what's on the inside that defines us. We share the same values. Ingenuity, commitment, sense of pride. These are the values that built this country. They're the values that built this company. Ritchie, proud to be a partner to the American cattlemen since 1921. We're back in the kitchen with Laura Majors, one of the recipe testers from the Beef Culinary Center. And Laura, I see you brought the slow cooker with you today. You know, we use a slow cooker a lot in our household. Why do you think it's become such a popular way to uh, fix beef? 
Yeah, Kevin, it's a popular way because you can take some of the uh, larger cuts from the shoulder, from the rump, from the round, and you can cook it all day and come home and at least part of the dinner's already made. You bet. And then you the reason we call it four-way is that you can take that beef, shred it, and then add different sauces or different ingredients oh to finish it off with a, to a lot of different flavors from different cultures. And we're gonna show you four different ways to prepare it quickly. Well, that sounds very exciting, let's get started. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is make sure that the beef is done. Okay. Um, we, we use what we call fork tender. Uh -huh. You're gonna pull the pieces out of the slow cooker yep. and you put it on like this, but I want you to see how oh, wow. easy this sure. fork goes in, and that's fork done. Very good. And then to shred it, you can just take a couple of table forks mm -hmm. and pull it apart, oh, yeah. and you can see how easy it's that pull pulls apart. apart. Sure. And you'll want to do that to the whole roast. Okay. And then you can make several dinners with this, or one, depending on how many people you have to feed. Okay. And so now you've already got some shredded roast beef, it right. looks like. Yeah, we have a little bit shredded here. We're gonna show you the Indian, uh, East Indian way that we would do this. We're going to add just a little tiki masala sauce. Okay. Stir it up mm -hmm. in there, and then this is what it's gonna look like, just sauce, and depending nice on beef. your finish, that? That's, you're gonna use either salsa or tiki masala, or for a Mexican dish, you could use any of your salsas sure. or Mexican sauces. Um, barbecue sauce also sure. works. And then you'd wanna cover this up, put it in the microwave for a minute to heat everything up. You might have to stir it once, put it back in, and then your meat is all heated. And for those people who want to go around the world uh, while staying in the comfort of their own home, you've got several different alternatives right, for us. Right, we do, and this is great to show kids how to cook. So they're gonna get a lot of different ideas about what they can eat from different cultures. Mm -hmm. And with this one piece of beef, you can do several have a party and roll out a whole bunch of different sauces from different countries and well, ingredients. Well, well tell us yeah. about these. Okay, thanks. Um, this is an Asian piece. It's got some hoisan sauce. You can also mm. use teriyaki, mix that in. It also has some cucumbers, a uh, few peanuts, and some carrots. Okay. Then moving on to the barbecue Perfect. sauce. It's a barbecue sandwich, whole mm -hmm. grain bun, very healthy for your family. Um, What's in the pita? The pita, and you can also use naan bread, okay. would be the East Indian oh. preparation that we prepared. Okay. And add some yogurt, some pistachio nuts, some of your other vegetables. Interesting. And then finally, we've got, sandwich. it looks like a uh, kind of a Mexican burrito. Yeah, it could be a taco, it could be a burrito. Uh, shredded beef is really good with Mexican food. Add some avocados, some tomatoes, some onions, and there you have it. So folks Very that easy. want to do multiple alternatives for the same meal or just not eat leftovers over and over and create some variety in leftovers, this is a great option. Yeah, it is. it really is. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you, Kevin. For this and other outstanding beef recipes, visit the website beefitswhatsfordinner.com or you can always find them on our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. We're back in the kitchen with Kristen Ledgerwood from the Culinary Innovations team. Now, Kristen, we know that beef is what's for dinner, but you've brought us a delicious recipe that we can start the day with. Is that right? I have, actually. Um, we think, you know, beef should be part of every meal, mm -hmm. so why not include it in breakfast? I agree. So we've brought today, we've got a um, breakfast beef sausage and egg muffin cup. Wow. Recipe that we're going to share with you guys today. Well, tell us how we do that. It looks like we've got, what, some ground beef or sausage, or what do you have here? This is uh, some lean ground beef. Okay. Uh, very easy to put together. So you could actually put this together very quickly for your family, or if you're gonna have a brunch. This oh, is a really great way to, idea. to be able to serve a, a beef meal as well um, very quickly. So um, so like I said, lean, uh, lean ground beef is yes. what we're gonna start off with. Sure. And to make our breakfast sausage, we've got a few spices. Okay. So we have some rub sage. Okay. Okay. We have uh, garlic powder. Oh yeah. Okay. It's always good. Add with a sausage. little flavor. We have onion powder. Yes. Some kosher salt. Sure. Yep. 
and a little heat. We've got some crushed red pepper uh, in here. Or a lot of heat. Let's Depending just on what that. you like. <laughs> I like if that. you like a lot of heat, then you could probably oh, double it, I'm great. sure. So and like I said, very easy. We're just gonna go ahead and mix this all together until it's uh, nice and combined. Yeah, it's amazing because I've never I've never thought of making sausage on the spot, right? I mean we right. make well, our own German sausage and things like that, but this is great. And a lot of people don't think of beef as an option for sausage. Right. So this is a really great way to do that. So yeah. So we're just gonna, like I said, just mix this up nice and thoroughly. Okay. We're gonna put it in a skillet, a warm skillet um, ah. on the stove. We're gonna cook it to 165 until yep. it's nice and uh, well done. Okay. And then um, we're gonna add some green chilies and some um, shredded cheese. Ah, some so, more heat. So it looks like you've already done that. We did. Um, so we mixed that together in with the um, drained ground beef. Okay. And then we just portioned it out within a 12 muffin tin. Okay. Very quick and easy. And then the last and very complicated part is to mix I can egg do part. eggs. Is this similar to scrambled eggs? This is very similar Perfect. to scramb scrambled we eggs. Can do this. So I've got five egg, uh, whole eggs in here. Okay. And with I'm, or without the shells? Without shells. <laughs> well, I prefer now that's the difference crunchy. between yours and my eggs. That's right. yeah. <laughs> um, I've got a quarter cup of some milk. Okay. So we're just going to add that in there. Okay. That's good. And again, a little bit of some heat. So ah, depending on what you like yeah. and what you have in your kitchen for some hot sauce, we're gonna add a little bit of some hot sauce in Very there. Very good. And then you're just gonna whip all that together, huh? We are. We're gonna just whisk this up. I always Make wondered sure. if you whip eggs or whisk eggs, but you probably whisk eggs. It's probably I usually whisk them. <laughs> but you can, you know, whatever you like to do in your own house, don't be you just mean let me to, know. For, so. To chickens. All right. So, all so, right. so then, uh, and then there's five eggs, and that's enough for a 12. That is. Ten. So we're just okay. going to pour that in there. You made a little bit of a mess, but <laughs> that's all right. It's never a dull moment, right? That's right. So we'll just go ahead and, like I said, just portion this off into our tins. How easy is that? Very easy, and it's, um, from here, it gets even easier. We're okay. gonna pop it in a hot oven at 375. Okay. And we're gonna bake it for about 17 to 20 minutes. All right. What we're looking for is a little bit of golden brown, but the big um, key is to make sure that there isn't any runny eggs. Sure. So, we will just finish those off there. Outstanding. And we have, uh, again, uh, you said about 17 to 20 minutes uh, mm -hmm. uh, to, to fully fully cook them. Yep. Outstanding. So we went ahead and got some nice and hot for you. Look at that. So we'll pull those out and you can see. Look at that, nice that and brown. these are nice and golden brown. That and that they delicious. are not runny at all, so. Well, and this is our final uh, our, our final effort here. Uh, okay. we'll serve yep. them with a little uh, salsa and I suppose fruit or whatever else you want to serve. Whatever them with. you'd like, depending on what your morning feels like. Well, so. this is a great way to enjoy beef at the beginning of your day for breakfast. Thank you so much for coming to the show. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. For this and other outstanding recipes, visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com or our website at cattlemantecattlemen.org. Say goodbye to your toughest pasture and rangeland weeds for good. Because one product offers season-long control, handles the widest spectrum of broadleaf weeds, and clears the way for increased forage with greater grazing flexibility. So you get more beef per acre at a cost that can't be beat. It's Grazon Next HL Herbicide. And if it's in your pastures, plain and simple, weeds won't be. If you're allergic to progress, I'll catch you later. How important is it for your vaccine, medicine, and pour on to be accurately administered? I mean, does a 376 pounder get the same medicine as a 400 pounder behind him? And how about your pour on? Cows can easily differ 100 pounds. Tapari has a pistol grip that automatically calculates the specific doses. It's amazing. You betcha. Squeeze shoot required. Check it out. Tapari.com. We know you're up before the dawn because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. I am I Global is here to help you do just that. With your permission, I would like to indulge in a little naked patriotism. The United States of America 
during my lifetime has become a nation like none other on earth. And not because it is the most powerful, but because we, more times than I can count, have taken the side of the oppressed with no intention to rule or conquer or pillage. And in the act of offering our assistance, we have sacrificed blood and money and lives, and we have beat ourselves up. We question our motives. Our leaders engage in heated debates of the hows and the whys, but we continue to be the single brightest light for the world's mistreated. Supporting the troops and their families on the front lines in the war on terror is not a partisan act. It's an act of pride, of compassion, of love, concern, anguish, and hope. They carry our colors into harm's way and have since 1776. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the flag that flew over Valley Forge. It was torn in two by the gray and the blue and bled through two world wars. I give you the flag that burned in the street in protest, in anger, and shame. The very same flag that covered the men who died defending her name. We now stand together, Americans all either by choice or by birth, to honor the flag that has flown on the moon and changed the face of the earth. History will show this flag stood a friend to the hungry, the homeless, and lost, that a mixture of men as common as clay valued one thing beyond cost, and they've signed it in blood. From Bunker Hill to Saigon, Kuwait, Bosnia, Kabul, Baghdad, and Tokori. I give you the flag that says to the world, each man has a right to be free. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter. Now, if you'd like to be involved in helping to keep beef on our plates, then why not join NCBA today? To find out more and to learn about all the money-saving benefits of being an NCBA member, just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit the website beef usa.org. We're back with more right after this. There are many great reasons to join NCBA and that includes exclusive NCBA member discounts and benefits from some outstanding companies. Hi, this is Kerry Bastine, president of Roper Apparel Footwear, Stetson Apparel Boots, and Tin Hall. We are uh, very proud sponsors of the NCBA. And for all new members signing up with the NCBA, you get 50% off your first purchase. And for all Go Forward members, you get 25% off four times a year. Go to urbanwesternwear.com, click on the NCBA specials, use your coupon code for your first 50% off, and come back to Urban Westernwear all year long and use your 25% coupons that you'll find in the National Cattlemen's newspaper. Big discounts on boots, clothing, and Western apparel is just one of the many amazing deals you get as an NCBA member. Don't miss out. Join NCBA today and enjoy these exclusive member discounts. Find out more at beefusa.org. Blaze a trail to Phoenix, Arizona and the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention and there will be education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can't afford to miss the huge NCBA Trade Show. Well, I think the trade show is a great place to get new ideas. There's no better place for cattlemen and women to learn and connect with fellow producers from across the country. The NCBA Trade Show is one of the great reasons to attend the convention. There's so many things to see from vendors to livestock handling, demonstrations, to all kinds of things, meat cutting demonstrations. It is a wealth of information. Plus, there will be top-notch entertainment and information that will help the bottom line of your cattle business. So blaze a trail to Phoenix and the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. January 31st through February 2nd. Visit BeefUSA.org for more.
Want to rewatch an episode of Cattleman to Cattleman or catch up on anything you've missed? Then visit our YouTube page. You'll find replays of all of our shows filled with educational segments and producer profiles from around the country. It's also another chance to see Baxter Black. So check us out at youtube.com slash cattleman to cattleman. Now, let's enjoy some amazing images submitted by farm and ranching families from around the country. It's Legacy Photos. Let's take a look. Why not send us your own favorite photos? Include your farm or ranch name, your hometown and state, and we may use them on a future episode of Cattleman to Cattleman. And we're still on the hunt for historic ranch or farm life photos from the 1960s, 50s, or even perhaps older. If you have historic photos, scan them and send them to us, and we'll use them as part of our special vintage legacy photo edition. To submit your photos, just go to our website, cattlemantocattleman.org. Well, that's our time for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman, which focused on our favorite beef recipes. I know I'm hungry now. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week right here on RFD TV.